Hi everyone, in this video you will learn what is the importance of using the right INCO terms and I'll be showing you some examples of wrong usage of INCO terms. This video is based on a chapter taken from the book An International Banker's Insight on INCO Terms Rules written by Roy Becker. Many importers, exporters and bankers do not understand the INCO terms, also known as international commercial terms. They do not understand the definition or the risk and responsibility of their favourite sales terms, which they have always used, including how INCO terms relate to payment terms. According to the author of this book, one banker told him that his bank does not try to educate his customers on the correct use of INCO terms because no one uses them anyway. What is wrong with this way of thinking? By educating customers on how to use INCO terms correctly, a bank can keep customers out of serious trouble and make their own life easier as well. By the way, I've created a quick 5-minute video on INCO terms and the link to the video is in the description box below. So, what happens when there is misuse and misunderstanding of INCO terms? I'll be showing you three examples. The first being wrong usage of X work. Second example, not understanding the documents needed for payment. Third example, not understanding FOB. The first example, wrong usage of X work. Exporters like to use the INCO term X work because they think it is the easiest for them. One company in US received a large order from an overseas buyer. Since the seller was eager to accept this large order, the seller offered a big discount on the X work price code and the buyer quickly agreed. However, the seller found out that the buyer had been selling his goods at a discounted price in a chain of US retail stores and this was sabotaging the seller's own sales. Well, this happened because the seller did not know how X work term works and that X work term does not require the seller to export the goods at all. He learned an expensive lesson when he had to buy back his own underpriced merchandise to avoid competing with his own domestic products that he was selling in the US. Well, the second example is not understanding the documents needed for payment. Another exporter came to the bank with documents in hand expecting to collect payment immediately on his letter of credit. Now, after a quick check of the documents, it was discovered he needed an onboard ocean bill of lading as specified in the letter of credit. However, he had presented a way bill issued by a trucking company. Although he correctly fulfilled his responsibility defined by X work, he became alarmed to find that the buyer's freight forwarder could stop his ability to collect payment on the letter of credit. Because what if the freight forwarder does not provide the ocean bill of lading before the LC expires? In the third example, which is not understanding FOB, the author provided an example whereby he said that some companies in the US use Uniform Commercial Code, which is one of the uniform acts with the goal of harmonizing law of sales and other commercial transactions across US. Well, the difference between UCC and Incoterms is UCC allows for FOB here, there, and everywhere, according to the author. However, Incoterms 2010 restricts the use of FOB to ocean shipments only. Well, in one example, the author of the book saw this one case 
whereby letter of credit was using FOB Colorado. Well, there are no ocean vessels in Colorado because there are no ports. And he noted, while exporters may have correct documents which comply with the LC, how will they defend their actions in the case of a dispute? Because Incoterms only restricts the use of FOB to ocean shipments. Not understanding how the other incoterms work can also cause problems. International traders and bankers must understand their responsibilities and use the correct INCO terms that matches correctly with the terms and conditions of the letter of credit or other agreed method of payment. If you like this video, do click like and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to receive more information on in-house and public training courses that we conduct, please go to www.tradelinks.com.my for further information.